Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast with Mike and Mike. Sales is a thinking process. This podcast will help you learn about what works in sales, how to hone your skills, and increase your success. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and right there I said Catalyst Sale Podcast with Mike and Mike, and I've got Mike Simmons with me, but no Mike Connor. Mike, we're without Mike Connor again, and I think we need to just address that. Mike Connor, for another podcast in a row, is not here. Where is Mike Connor? Well, I, I you know, with Mike not be, I don't take it personally. So it's not me, it's him. But Mike, <laughs> uh, yeah, there have been a couple of times where Mike's missed uh, just because of vacation and timing hadn't worked out. This is actually an instance where you know, Mike and I are in divide and conquer mode. We've got some new clients that we brought on board, uh, some really interesting engagements, and it is uh, requiring that we uh, we take a divide and conquer approach. Well, then that's interesting. Let's run with that. You and Mike are partners. It allows you to really break in two different directions. You can handle the podcast today while he's out working on something with a client. That's just a, one of the beautiful things about partnerships. So let's run with this. And look at it in two ways. One is an entrepreneur working with a partner, because I know not everybody that listens to Catalyst Sale Podcast is a salesperson within a large organization. Sometimes they have their own organization, and that's where they're making the sales. So we'll take that approach, but we'll also take the approach of within an organization partnering with somebody, because that might leave you scratching your head saying, oh, well, how does that even work? So. Let's start with the entrepreneur. You and Mike Connor started Catalyst Sale together. Now you're you're partners in this business, and like today, you can each go in different directions. How does that benefit Catalyst Sale? Well, first, the audience drew the short end of the stick because I uh, I don't know that I've got a voice for for podcasting. I think Mike's got a better voice. So you know, usually, what we would do is we leverage each other's strengths, and you know, Mike might be the person who comes on and does the uh, does the podcast. When we look at the way that we partner together, I tend to get more into the weeds, into the detail, into the into the data. Mike will focus on things at a at a bit higher level, focus more on strategy. By having those two capabilities that come together, it makes the organization stronger. Now we do also have some things that we do that both of us do well. They're not just they're yeah, similar sets of skill sets, whether it relates to digging into a uh, client environment, providing the research, gathering information, summarizing findings, prospecting, going out and selling. So there are other instances where when we take a divide and conquer approach, it's not because we need to focus on a specific area or interest. It's because we just have too much work to do. So having a if if Mike was doing this on his own or I was doing this on their, our own, we we wouldn't be able to split ourselves. So I think that highlights the importance of a partnership and being able to work with people you trust, people who can take on things, work autonomously, kind of come back together, share experience, share thoughts, build upon things, maybe unclog some arteries there where you know maybe the creative process gets stuck a bit, but. For me, I, I can't imagine doing this without a partner. Well, I want to touch on something that you mentioned that you play to your strengths. If you and Mike Connor were equally as good at the same things, if you partnered with somebody that could do what you do, then one of you isn't even really necessary. Would let's, you say let's, that's keep, let's keep that as our little secret. <laughs> nobody, yeah, nobody, we, tell, nobody tell Connor that, please. Yeah, you may not want Mike Connor to hear this episode. Yeah. So do you find that to be true that you and Mike Connor work together so well because you're each good at different things? Yeah, I think because we're we're each good at different things but we're also good at some of the same things. So, and this is an overused term I think from the 80s, but I was I was a little bit young then so I don't remember if if that's if that's right. It might even be 90s, but there's synergy. There's a synergy that is created where we're able to bring our collective experiences together and elevate a conversation, but there are also environment, there are also situations where we know it doesn't make sense to have both both of us and I'll refer to us in the third person, both mics in a room at a time. You know, like there are there are instances where as we've built out the business, we've said, if both of us are on this call, it is not helping or adding value to 
the long-term objectives of Catalyst Sale and may or may not be helping the long-term objectives of the client that we're working with. So, you know, we, we joke a little bit, I think it was, uh, I forget if it was Mike's granddad that said this or it was somebody who he'd worked with before, but, you know, one mic's a mic, two mics is half a mic, and three mics is no mic at all. <laughs> well, let's move this into within an organization. I, I mentioned that seems unlikely to people. If you're both employees, if you're both sales reps, how can you partner together? The main thing I see there, and we talked about this on our previous episode where we talked a little bit about shadowing and mentoring, is about sharing experience. So I may work with a sales rep who is really good at X, and I'm really good at Y. Together, if we can combine their capability with X and my capability with Y, we can create a super rep, so to speak. And you know, that's where, you know, so for me, historically, if people had problems with Excel or were trying to do something with data, I could work through pivot tables and VLOOKUP and some of the other things that you could do, remedial things that you could do with a, a tool like Excel, but was things that were Greek to others inside the organization. Now, on the flip side, putting together pretty presentations and keeping uh, language short and to the point, you know, getting back into that be bright, be bright, be brief, be gone. That wasn't a strength of mine. I could, get, I would end up being a bit wordy. So, you know, having somebody help me with presentations, which weren't my strength, would be really helpful. So, leveraging the strengths of other members in the team really help you get better as a rep and help the organization get better. So, in a sales leadership role, and I'll kind of transition this into more of a leadership thing. It's really important to understand the strengths that you have across the team, and if you have. A lot of people talk about diversity, and some people talk about diversity from the context of ethnicity, religion, sex. Diversity really should be you know, a can be viewed at, excuse me, viewed from a perspective of thought. Imagine you know, bringing into an organization a couple of partners who have diverse thoughts and can provide that diverse perspective to a challenge, a problem, a solution that you're working on. And how much better can that solution be? I think Dan Peter talked about this on one of the previous episodes, the one that we talked about with Salesforce and Ohana and community. How much better can your solution be if you bring those diverse perspectives together? And how does that drive innovation? So bringing it back inside the organization, if you know the strengths of the people that you work around, leverage those strengths to become better at what you're doing, but also deliver better value to your customer base. Now, last episode, I told a little bit about as a park ranger, I had a mentor, but here's another example from being a park ranger on how partnerships might work. Now, saying partnership, you may think you team up with somebody and do everything together or work towards the same goals together. But there were times where we would have a law enforcement incident. And then afterwards, we would just talk and say, hey, what, what did you see that? What did you see happen? How could I have done better? How should I handle this next time? That's a little bit of mentoring, but it's a little bit of partnership too, because if we constantly did that for each other, then it helps us become more aware and really just partner together to continuously improve and see how we could handle situations differently. Do you think that same approach works when it comes to sales? Absolutely. I mean, think about on the military side, I think they call these after action reviews or AARs. On the sales side of things, it might be a debrief or a brief summary of how a deal was won or how a deal was lost or how a challenge inside a customer scenario was addressed. And it's through these share, through the sharing of information, through discussion associated with that sharing of information that progress is made and knowledge is transferred. And ideally, we all get better uh, so that the next time we are in that, that scenario, we, we've got a better solution. And, and you know, another thing that this kind of made me, made me think about, I think about from a career perspective, you know, I had a chance early on in my career when I got, first got involved in ed tech, I, was, uh, I worked with 400 accounts. I had a territory in the Northeast and someone would say, how could you work with 400 accounts? And I know there are many people out there who might work with 400 accounts. They might work with 1,000 accounts, and they can go through their process of how they would do it. When you work with that volume of accounts, 
there are, it's rare for you to come across a new experience, something that you haven't heard before. Yet, as I got later on in my career and I started working with more strategic accounts and had five or six accounts that I was working with, there were many scenarios that that early level account manager or account consultant had experienced and had seen and maybe sees multiple times in a given week that I just would never come across. And if I didn't have a team that I could lean on, that I could share experience with, that I could partner with, I wouldn't be able to resolve that customer issue as quickly or as effectively as possible. So sharing that information, partnering with people and sharing information is so, so key. And going back through that debrief process, that after action review that, okay, here's the scenario, here's the information we captured during the scenario, here's what we learned, here's how we addressed it, here's what the results were. That's only one part of the part of the discussion. That's delivering information, that's presenting information. The other part is the dialogue, the view of saying, how could we have done this better? What could we have done differently? Was there an opportunity that we missed? And not taking it from the perspective of, hey, everybody in the room is critiquing me and is challenging the way that I went about my job, but more from the perspective of what can we learn from the collective intelligence of the group. So if we're in an organization and we like this idea, this conversation we're having about partnering with somebody, where do we look? How do we get started to make that happen? I would start the same way you start in the communities you live in. Who do you hang out with? You start to see certain people who go up to the gym and you have conversations with them, or you see certain people go to the bar and you have conversations with them, or you see certain people who go to the pool, you have conversations with them. You see certain people who go to the lunchroom, you have conversations with them. You pay attention to what's happening inside the organization. And when you see that somebody did something good, send a congratulations note, send a, a thank you, send a some kind of email or Slack message or other kind of communication, recognizing them for what they did. Use that as a way, as an entry point for engagement. Once you've entered into that engagement, then build upon it. And don't go straight for the goods right out of the gate and say, hey, can you explain to me what happened here and there? Uh, build rapport. Dan Tyre talked about that, building rapport on that connect call. Build rapport, build a relationship, and then people start to open up in the information that they share. And that's on a one-to-one, -one, in a one-to-one -one scenario. In a one-to-many scenario, I think as leaders inside an organization, you've really got to drive home the culture of shared experience and engagement and the value that you get from that shared experience. So I would look for opportunities inside, you know, as, a, as a sales manager, as an example, inside a sales meeting, create those opportunities for people to share success, share case studies, and not just share success and saying, hey, we won this deal and here are the key factors that led to winning the deal and here are the roles of the people that were inside the deal and leave it at that. Actively promote engagement. And if you've got to juice that up a little bit or inspire that a little bit by planting additional questions inside the group, then do so. Because you know, I've been in those rooms where you've got 45 sales reps going through a uh, listening to the success story. And it's the seventh success story that they've heard over the course of a three-day period. And it just becomes starts to become like a Charlie Brown's teacher scenario. And at the end of the discussion, there are crickets. Nobody's talking. Nobody's asking a question. And it's deflating for the person who shared the experience. But it's also frustrating for those inside the audience who really feel like they should ask a question or want to ask a question, would like to get additional information. But because the crowd is not engaged, they kind of step toward the back. So plant a question or two. And you know, I've been known to do that where I ask people inside a group to ask a question just to prompt engagement. I don't know if that's manipulative. But I hope it's inspiring and it just kind of breaks the ice a little bit. Well, Mike, as we wrap this episode up, is there any final thought you want to give us about the idea of working with a partner? Yeah, you know, we say this over and over and over again about don't fail alone. It's rare that in a procurement discussion or a contract negotiation that the thing that came up, that might be the first time you've heard it, it's rare that somebody inside the organization has not heard that before. So when it comes to building partnerships, you do this before you need a partnership. It's really hard to find a partner when 
you're in the middle of that contract negotiation or you're in the middle of that scenario and you're asking people to give time when they don't have complete context. But if you've built this culture, if you've built this relationship inside the organization where you've got this group of trusted advisors or trusted partners inside your network that you can lean on, then it becomes much easier to circle those wagons, rally that team, get those people behind the story. And in a partnership, you should be providing equal value or better value. So in those scenarios, what I try to do is make sure I provide more value than I take in every one of those discussions. I don't get myself into a situation where I feel like, all right, I'm going to share this because I think there's going to be some kind of quid pro quo on the other side. Don't worry about the quid pro quo. Do the right things and good things will follow. All right. Thank you, Mike. And let me remind you, if you would like Mike and Mike to answer a question on the Catalyst Sale podcast, you can send it to hello at catalystsale.com. Just let us know and we'll work it into an episode. And Mike Simmons, we can expect to hear Mike Connor's voice on this show pretty soon, right? Uh, we'll see, I guess. I mean, actually, I, I like that he's working away and you know pounding away and creating widgets. And you know, for those of you who like Elf, he's he's working on uh, meeting his quota of etch a sketch uh, uh, <laughs> etch a sketches that he creates. So I'd, Mike can keep working away, and 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 we'll do we'll do this. And but uh, yeah, I would expect we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have Mike uh, uh, back on here pretty soon. Uh, well, I only ask because I'm starting to get worried that it's me. I'm the reason he's not showing up. I think it's me, but you know, then, it, <laughs> but yeah, well, Michael, Michael, be back on here, and you know, I just hi- highlight to this group: if you've got experience where you've worked with a partner, or even on the last episode where we talked about mentorship, where a mentor has made an impact in your uh, career, share this, share that experience in the comments uh, on our LinkedIn posts, and we'll promote your comment, we'll engage with you, provide feedback, and through that kind of engagement, all boats rise. All right. Great idea, Mike. And thank you so much. And thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Podcast.